These are thumbnail sketches for making the drawing in one point perspective. I've drawn like four rectangles and I made them about the same proportion that I want the picture to be when I actually do the big project. And I'm always making sure that I put my vanishing point in because these are one point perspective pictures. But because they're so small, I'm not worried about using the ruler because these are actually just, like I said, planning sketches and are not my final one. Most artists, when they're planning a major project, will make several thumbnail sketches to kind of get in their mind how they want it to look. And then that way, they don't end up wasting material by coming up with something and starting it and then finding out that they really don't like the way it looks at all. A thumbnail sketch is just what the name is, a sketch. So it's not something that's going to be detailed and it's not something that you have to make perfect. It's just plans. It's just thinking with your pencil. That's usually my word for making a thumbnail sketch. You're thinking with your pencil because artists, they think visually. I've speeded this demonstration up to about twice as fast as I'm actually drawing it, so I don't think you have to sketch at warp speed in order to do a thumbnail sketch. But I know you want to get busy and start doing your work, and so rather than have you sit for any longer than you have to, I just decided to make this go faster. For a one-point perspective drawing, you don't really have to have the vanishing point right in the middle. You can have it over, and I've got it up a little bit toward the top of the paper just because I want the eye level to be higher up. And then I'm still using the vanishing point and lining things up with the vanishing point, but again, because it's so small and it's just a sketch, I'm not using my ruler. And I can make it go a lot faster that way, too, and try out a lot more ideas. It's important to learn how to think visually as well as verbally, and this is a really good way to learn how to think visually. The picture doesn't have to be about something that you would see every day, like a city or just uh, houses or things that it would look like on your street. It can be something just from your imagination entirely, but one point perspective actually helps it look more maybe like what you had envisioned in your mind, more three-dimensional or whatever. They don't have to make sense. This sketch actually reminds me of something that an artist named Giorgio De Chirico would have done. His uh, paintings have a lot of one-point perspective in them, a lot of depth, a lot of uh, geometric structures, but they also have a lot of other things in them too. He was a surrealist artist. He was making things that come from the dream world or from the imagination or the subconscious. You don't have to like every thumbnail sketch that you do. And that's really the whole point of making a thumbnail sketch is that you might not like a lot of them, but because you didn't put a lot of time into them on your big project, it's not really a waste of time. It's just kind of trying out ideas to see what works and what you like. So I'll put some buildings here. And you don't have to make just uh, perspective structures when you do a drawing like this. You can add some other things too. And I decided I'm going to put a horse in this picture. And of course it's just a sketch so it doesn't have to be a detailed drawing of a horse. Oh, but look, it's kind of out of proportion. It's like probably about twice as tall as it should be in relation to the barn. So I'm just going to leave that one and go on and do this one over here now. Now I've got my vanishing point back toward the center, but up a little bit higher. And I'm going to try another drawing with a horse this time. But you can add a lot of different things. You can add, you know, trees and people and animals and just all kinds of things besides just the structures that you draw in perspective. The only thing that you want to be sure to do is to draw them in proportion. So if you draw a person down by the bottom of the paper and then you draw one up by the horizon line, 
the one up by the horizon line's got to be a lot smaller in order to make it look right because if you made it the same size then that would uh, indicate that it's going to be a lot bigger than the one in front like maybe even a giant or something like that Remember when you're trying to create depth and make some things look like they're farther away from you than other things, the things that are looking farther away from you, they have to be higher up on the picture plane and they have to be smaller than the same thing down closer to the bottom because it's placement and size change that helps actually add depth to your drawing. And once I've finished several of these sketches, chances are that I'll find one that I think will work really well for the big project that I want to do. And then I'll have an idea of how I want to go about it. And it'll be a lot less trial and error and things like that. I can put people on this porch. And I'm going to draw another uh, fence right there. And I'm going to draw a house up near the top here, but I'm going to draw it smaller, see, so it looks like it's farther away. If you get into the habit of drawing thumbnail sketches just to kind of think about how something's going to look, it can actually help you start to relax while you're drawing because you know that they're not something that's going to have to be permanent, and so even if you don't like it, it's okay.